This is the, the great paradox that, that total freedom leads to unfreedom. That if freedom is the thing you, you most value or most prioritize, then it's the last thing you'll actually get. Actually personally and in terms of the structures of society? At both levels. At so both let's levels? start with a personal. Just think of a relationship. Think yep. of the meaning that you, one's life is invested with through, through a, a strong lifelong friendship. Mm. A lifelong friendship brings with it constraints. Constraints on the sorts of things we will do mm. and say with respect to that person. Um, we don't even think of them as constraints um, because they are just trivially instrumental constraints on our freedom um, um, given the riches that flow from the friendship. Um, or consider at an even more basic level, uh, there is basically free-flowing traffic and free-flowing traffic depends upon there being an incredibly elaborate system of rules and conventions and limits and, and constraints. It, it's those precise limits that liberate the traffic and this idea that limits liberate is, it, it may seem paradoxical, but it's the most obvious thing in the world when you think yeah. about it. Liberalism can't cope with that, can't cope with limits. It's always chafing against limits. Um, it can't deal with, with, really, with, with any limits at all, because any limit seems to be, or can be construed as, and correctly as, a constraint on my freedom. Yeah. We're born into a dense web of unchosen obligations. And yes, maybe it's possible to cut free of those, those unchosen obligations over time, but you're not gonna be able to live a fulfilling life if you don't pick up certain other obligations that you will agree to, 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 to abide by. Um, and so this is, you know, it's, it's, you know, part of the difficulty of a f political philosophy that m motivates and encourages individual freedom above all else is that it becomes pretty obvious in how we're moving from the private to the public it becomes pretty obvious that the only possible policeman and guardian for my the exercise of my individual freedoms against my fellow citizens is the state um, you know if it's a non-state actor then it's it, it, it is an affront on my my individual freedom it's some other group of individuals doing it they're not we, we, we all have to start turning towards a single leviathan, as it were, that is going to protect my freedoms. But once we get to that point, then we've got to the, we're lurching towards the very tyranny that liberalism set out trying to avert. Because the omnicompetent state is the, as the sole guarantor left of my individual freedoms once I've cut myself adrift from all the unchosen obligations that I might have, that I previously had to, to nation, to neighborhood, to family, to friends, to guilds, and so on and so forth. Uh, I still need something to secure my freedom, my, to enforce my contractual uh, rights and, and to protect my property rights and so on and so forth. And, and so uh, one becomes dependent more and more dependent on, on, on the state uh, and that becomes the primary the primary relationship, and Burke's platoons disappear, a civil society disappears, and then all of those intermediary institutions that make up the make up the fabric of certainly this country, and I think as Tocqueville saw in in America, makes up the sort of what's so distinctive about about American culture. All of that starts to fall away.